All right, more ravings. Now, am I advocating gun violence? Am I advocating armed insurrection? Am I advocating race war and all the horrible possible things that can have happen? Uh, and I think most people know it. I'm exaggerating a little certain tendencies because, you know, we are in a horrible situation that's going to get worse with unemployment. But when this went down in the 30s, and this has been in the movies recently with uh, Johnny Depp, I think, played John Dillinger, Public Enemies. Among the extraordinary ordinary who are living through the Depression, who were their heroes? The bank robbers. Dillinger gets asked, well, why do you rob banks? Well, that's where the money is. He comes into the bank and the guy's handing in, you know, he wants to make his deposit or he's just taking a little bit of money out because he doesn't have much, but he's just an ordinary, extraordinary guy. Depp doesn't steal his money, he takes the bank's money. And, of course, that's one of the things we don't understand yet. The great secret, the horrible secret that's finally going to be taken up by the American people and they're going to realize what a con job was done to us by people in the financial institutions. You know, we've gone through this crisis and still the truth of it has not made it through the press which shows you just how bought and paid for those guys are. Okay? Richard Kotlars is on my website. Read his stuff about banking and money. When you borrow money from your bank, when you use that credit card and that 8, 10, 15,000 credit uh, thing that they gave you, that money didn't exist until you borrowed it. Okay? It's created by the banks at the moment of borrowing. It's called debt money. Look up debt money on the internet. And it's a con job. And you go into the history, Richard's articles that you can link to on my website, A New View of Money, go into all the historical details as well. The founders knew about this. A big part of the Revolutionary War was because the Americans were being forced to use bank of England currencies. Think about it. Right now we're being forced to use dollars and these dollars come into existence in a process which is totally advantageous to the bankers. They get rich off of creating money out of nothing. And the reason the Federal Reserve not only controls the money supply, that's an interesting way to look at it, but it's part of the con job to call it that, and also controls the interest rates is because when you let your banks create money, it's inflationary. Now, what's inflation? Inflation comes about because you dilute the current value of the money. When you make more money out of nothing, you dilute all the rest of the money, and that causes inflation. And that's why the Fed controls inflation. I keep reading articles where they talk about the Fed as if it's part of the government. You know, I had to write a nasty letter to, to uh, Reuters news on the internet the other day. Not that they paid any attention to it, but they wrote this big article. What, what was the big article about? <clears throat> well, uh, you know, the government debt has now gone over 3.1 trillion since the crisis started. You read that anywhere? It's a lie. It's part of the con job. More than half plus 
$2 trillion was created by the Fed out of nothing to loan to the big financial institutions. And the Fed is not part of the government. It just has a name that sounds like it's the government. These people selling us this con job said, well, let's call it the Federal Reserve. People will think it's related to the government. And oh yeah, we'll let, let the president appoint the chairman of the Federal Reserve. But of course, he's going to know that he better appoint who we want. And a lot of really smart people in economics have gone along with this for years. They sort of forget about it. They sort of think that it, the Fed is part of the government. The Fed is a private banking institution totally designed for the purpose of allowing banks to create money out of nothing because all the players in that game get richer than God. And it's time for the extraordinary ordinary to tighten our belts and get ready for the collapse of the dollar and all that other crap that seems on the horizon and figure out how to survive by cooperating with each other. Okay? We gotta talk to each other and we gotta cooperate with each other. And don't you think we're not up to it? That's what we do. That's what the American spirit is. It's always been that way. On the surface you can find all this conflict, you know? You go to the news, <laughs> And you read the blogs. I mean, that's what happened with the <clears throat> Shirley Sherrod thing. You know, all the blogs went crazy. In fact, I read an article recently where a guy did some talking to various people about what goes on in Washington with all the crazy blogs. You know, something weird that gets said by the press secretary in the next day, 2,000 talking heads of liberals and Republicans and who knows what have all spoken their mind and had their stay about what's wrong and then you go out into the real, real world of America and you ask an ordinary person they kind of scratch their head well that's dumb you know if there's a rule in Washington it is that if it's common sense we don't do it here let me say that again Washington to have a sign. You go into Washington, you know. Arriving in Washington, D.C., you know, at the airports and the roads and the trains and everything, and then there should be, our motto is, if it's common sense, we don't do it here. Okay? Out in the real world, where you have to work for a living, you can't just own stock, and other people work for you, and you can't just own a bank and make money out of nothing, and then loan it to people, and make money off that. What's one of the founding documents of the United States of America? Common Sense by Thomas Paine. Read it. I wrote a book, Uncommon Sense, because common sense is uncommon today. The degeneration and the redemption of America. Uncommon sense. The degeneration and the redemption of American political life. It's just a history, you know, with some indications of what might be happening in the future and what the heck we can do about it. It's about understanding the thing, you know, and you can read it for free. You don't have to buy the book. Isn't that nice?